All right, we're going to wrap up this afternoon's uh, media availabilities uh, with a visit from, to my right, Scott Miller, uh, NASCAR's Senior Vice President of Competition, and to his right, uh, Gene Stefanishin, uh, NASCAR Senior Vice President, Innovation and Racing Development. Um, I'll start with Gene. Uh, why don't you just uh, perhaps explain to us a little bit about the changes uh, to the rules um, that you have uh, this weekend that we're looking at and what that uh, is doing to impact the cars um, at the moment. Yeah, perhaps, uh, is this on, can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Perhaps a bit of a, uh, a bit of a history here because sometimes we lose contact. So in 2014, we had on the car 3,000 pounds of downforce in 15, we took it down to 2,700. And today on the track, they're running, today being the 16 rules package, they're 2,000. And the package we'll be running here in Michigan will be 1,500. So it's been a journey over three or four years. We've been taking the downforce down. The other change this year uh, is we've also taken side force out of the car uh, to the tune of about 110 pounds of side force out of the car. So, and the reasoning for, for taking the downforce and the side force off the car, obviously we take the aerodynamic forces off the car, it makes the car a bit more difficult to drive for the drivers, but in taking those aerodynamic devices off, we do clean up the amount of uh, air or turbulence around the car, so the car should be able to uh, move around each other better and pass. So that's kind of the, the, the theory. So. There are four specifics uh, in the package. Uh, I'll start at the back of the car. Uh, the, the spoiler, we uh, shortened up the spoiler. Uh, it was 64 inches wide, it's 53 inches wide. It was three and a half inches tall. It's now two and a half inches tall. So you can imagine it's quite a bit of surface area taken away. That will reduce the downforce, but it also reduces the side force because the right side of the spoiler as we're turning that, that hangs out there, it catches a lot of air and it provides a lot of side force in the car. So the spoiler will be doing do th two things. It'll be a downforce reduction and a side force reduction. On the back of the car, on the driver's side on the back, there's what we call a deck fin. That has also been tapered down and cut down. That will re reduce a bit more uh, a bit more side force too and also looks better the way we've kind of integrated it into, into the spoiler. Uh, the other thing we've done on the rear of the car is we have put in a zero toe or skew, which means that um, when we had that, that would provide some turning advantage, but it would also would introduce skew into the car, which is some side force. That was another side force reduction uh, initiative. And the final piece of it, the fourth piece is, of course, the front splitter, where the outer edges of it, they were approximately six inches wide. We've taken them down to two inches, and that, that took off quite a bit of downforce in the front of the car. So in this exercise, we took off about 500 pounds of downforce. We took off about 110 pounds of side force. And it's very important as we were taking this down that the front and rear downforce reduction was taken down in a balanced fashion so we didn't upset the balance of the car. So it was kind of tried to maintain the same balance we've got today. So that in a nutshell is what we were trying to do. Really what we're trying to do is the, I think the best way to describe it is the car as it goes through the air, it casts this aerodynamic shadow and we're trying to make this shadow as small as possible so the other cars around it don't feel the effects of the shadow as it were. So, uh, yeah, so that's kind of a, a synopsis. Excellent. Uh, yep. Uh, Scott, do you want to perhaps address what your expectations are, what to do this, obviously, putting a lot of effort that you and uh, the folks back at the Research and Development Center have done. W what is the goals here? What are you trying to achieve for the racing? Well, I think that we made a we made a pretty good uh, pretty good step forward with the move we made from the 2015 to the 2016 package package um, uh, for aerodynamics in in making more competitive racing and and closer closer competition more passes for the lead. Um, in most cases, all the metrics we look at have been have been better uh, in those areas. So this is this is a, this is just another step toward uh, again creating closer competition and you know great racing that 
that uh, the fans and the media and everybody, uh, everybody, everybody wants to see. Uh, we want to see that really, really bad. And, and I think this direction has been something that's been embraced by the drivers. And, and actually, we've worked together with them to, to, to land here and try this for this year as a potential uh, as a potential way to move forward with uh, with closer competition. Thank you, Scott. Uh, we'll open it up uh, to questions to the media. We'll start here with uh, Mr. Spencer, and we'll go over to Kenny Bruce, and then to Bob. Uh, Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Uh, the drivers today, after practice, have described uh, the feeling of racing the new package anywhere from challenging to lots of fun in case of some of the younger ones. Uh, but they've also expressed the fact that until Sunday, really, they won't know what it's like to race in larger packs. And are, are, are you going to encourage them at all during practices on Saturday to try to race in larger groups and perhaps in close quarters? Well, no, well, that that's that's pretty much up to them. You know, I expect to um, I expect to see many of them testing those waters on their own because you know they they don't want to be they don't want to be surprised when the race starts so i i think tomorrow's practices without us actually saying anything may look a little bit different than than that than they generally do on saturday just because of the unknowns of of running close together yeah i think they were they're focused today on on qualifying and single car and they're very focused on that and then tomorrow i think they'll bring the other element to it is to learn that piece of it so yeah go to kenny and then to bob kenny bruce with nascar.com a couple of quick things uh gene the the change in the spoiler itself how much downforce did that take away I realize you did other things as well to do it, but but just the spoiler change. What would what would the impact of that have been? Yeah, I think Kenny to just uh, we took 500 off and it was about evenly split front to rear, 250, 250. 250. Yeah, that'd be you know box car numbers. That's about yeah. what it was. Yeah. Okay. And for both of you guys, I, I know they just practiced today, and you just mentioned a lot of it was single car runs, qualifying trim. But what did you see out there today, if anything? Well, I heard a lot. <laughs> I mean, I heard the cars when they went in the corners were a lot quieter than I have in the past. And when I went and walked or walked the garage and talked to some of the drivers, they said they have to find the new spot to lift, and that spot is quite a bay, quite a ways further back, and uh, they're using the brakes a bit more. So I think they're you know they're getting used to it. But uh, it, the first thing I noticed was 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 my, my in my ears. I, I could hear it, but I don't know what what, what you all thought. Uh, no, not really, and, and that uh, the the to the first question about how much downforce got taken off by the spoiler the, by the spoiler alone. One of the one of the one of the objectives was to keep the the aerodynamic balance of the car the same. And um, both this morning in practice and the little bit that we got to run this at the tire test, it was pretty much a direct swap over, and there was really no there was no huge balance change. It was just less grip, which, which is what we were looking for, which is a, a, a testament to the science, both the CFD and the wind tunnel development that that we did to establish the package. You know, it all it all correlated exactly correctly to the racetrack. And as far as today, I think I think. It's it's difficult to to visually see the difference, but when you look at when you look at the data from the cars, the the speed trace is significantly different. The the mid corner speeds are are down a lot. Uh, the entry speeds are up a little, and uh, from some of the driver comments, you know, having to having to use the brakes pretty hard, and and maybe even thinking about needing brake cooling and every everything at a at a big track like this is a is a departure from where we've been before, and we're really hoping that those things actually produce a really, really good race on Sunday. Okay, we'll go to Bob, and then uh, down here to Brant, and uh, then over to Lee. Go ahead, Bob. Bob Hockers, ESPN. Two questions. First, um, were the speeds that you saw in practice today about what you would expect for the temperatures, and I mean, are you okay with what they're running as far as before they do have to start lifting going into the corner? Yeah, I would say we, you know, did our analysis. Um, 
and, you know, we, we came up with some numbers, uh, simulation. We came here, as you know, it was three weeks ago, I think, in Michigan. We ran, I mean, it was very, very close. What we're seeing today is it's all in the ballpark. So we expect once we get them, you know, uh, racing and a lot of cars around each other, the speeds will drop as we always do. Sunday should be a warmer day. So yeah, right now from what we're seeing, we feel, we feel comfortable. And uh, this one will be for Scott. Uh, you're about five races into the new lug nut rule and policy. Are you kind of comfortable with where you're at there as far as how you're officiating it and the penalties that you're issuing? Uh, as far as the penalties go, yes, that, that's, 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 that's what we plan on continuing uh, to get it in check. And, and as we've said all along, we're, we continue to work on different uh, technology items to, to be able to instantaneously um, see things happening on pit road to to a higher degree than than we can today, and we're we're getting close on some of those things. Can't really talk much about what what all those are, but uh, I think you can expect to see some see some different strategies there on our side uh, coming, hopefully sooner rather than later. Down to Brant, over to Lee, and then over here to the middle. Brant James, USA Today Sports. Of the downforce that you took away at the beginning of the year with the new package, how what percentage of it have the teams engineered back into the cars at this point? Yeah, I think that's uh, there's a lot of stories swirl around about that, and I think some people we took about 700 pounds off. A lot of people said they've got it all back. That that's really that's not true. I mean, we audit cars, we take and put them in a tunnel, we measure them. I would say they, depending on the team, they would have probably gotten an or, in an order of one to one fifty back, somewhere like that. So, uh, uh, yeah, they're not; uh, they haven't recouped all that back. So, yeah, that's a. Uh, and uh, drivers seem, you know, the like less downforce. They, you know, talk about the increased competition and you know, good for the show, et cetera, et cetera. But the engineers are going to keep trying to put the downforce back in the car. How tricky is that sweet spot for you to sort of? legislate with rules so it can it's, be what everyone wants. Well, it's it's it it's a little it's a little easier for us to to stay ahead of that than it is for them to get ahead of us on that. So it, it's it's um it's fairly fairly easy to change rules packages and stuff to to stay up and stay ahead of the development curve that that they're on. But it's a good observation, you know. We we reduce it, and they're trying to trying to find. It's kind of like dieting, right? You know, <laughs> it's a constant struggle. <laughs> um, I think it's a it's kind of an interesting journey. I think we got a couple of very interesting things coming up here. When we're done here on Sunday night, we're off to Kentucky. Uh, as you all know, uh, we've got a repave going on there, and. Uh, uh, hats off to our SMI colleagues there. They've uh, done some very interesting things on the track there with uh, some new uh, type of asphalt and all that. So we don't know how it's going to play out, but everything we're seeing so far, we're encouraged. And that'll be a very, very good learning exercise for us. And we'll have, you know, 14 cars down there Monday and Tuesday running before we go back there to race. So we'll be learning about the package in Kentucky. We'll also be learning about the repave. So we got a repave, and as you're probably aware, uh, turn one and turn two, we've uh, They've increased the banking there from 13 to 17, so the track will be a bit different for the drivers. So uh, some interesting things going on here in the next couple of weeks, a lot of learning going on and uh, for all of us. Hey, Gene, before we go to Lee, can you, can you give a little bit of a description in terms of th how different this repave is and some of the things that you're actually, that they're doing this different in terms of the technology um, ahead for that track? Yeah, they, we have a, a way of measuring the roughness of the track. When I talk about the roughness of the track, I'm not talking about the big bumps. I'm talking about the actual very minute analysis of the, of the asphalt itself. And we measure it, and we measure it in micrometers from crest to trough. And uh, the aggregate that they use in this track is much coarser than traditionally. There was a time uh, that people were paving with asphalt to make the track last a long time, like I-75 or something like that. And I think there's a significant amount of evidence now to suggest that's probably not the right type of surface for racing. It doesn't promote tire wear. It's very, very uh, high high grip. And, you know, it's uh, so what we've done here is they've, they've uh, come together or created a very 
coarse aggregate. And when we measured the track before, it was 230 micrometers. And we have measured it after, uh, it was 460. So uh, now the only other challenge then is you've got, you've got it, it's coarse, but now the new has a lot of oil in it and things like that, which reduce friction. So the other thing they've done is use lime to wash the track down with lime many, many times to try to remove the oil out of the track to increase friction also. So we don't know where this is going to end up yet, but if it works out well, it could in fact be uh, you know, something we look to as a future guide for uh, repaving track. So that's uh, kind of a bit of a learning going on. I hope there wasn't too much detail. I hope we go over to Lee, and then we're here in the middle, and we then go to Jim Utter. Scott, uh, OD said on Sirius the other day that they were looking at perhaps putting practices at the actual times we race. And, you know, yet tomorrow it's supposed to be extremely warm, a lot different than what our conditions will be for the racing. But is that something on the table? And if so, when could it be implemented? Because it, it just seems to be one of those common sense things that's always talked about is why do we practice in conditions that don't, you know, that are not close to what we race in? Yeah, that, that's definitely something that's on the radar for us. Um, and, and it does make good practical common sense to be practicing with track conditions much closer to, to the way they will be in race conditions. There's, there's a lot of challenges with the, with the schedule and the companion races and making that all and making that all fit. Um, one of the things that uh, from a long time ago, I think there was some practices after the companion race and we've, 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 uh, we've talked about a lot of things and beat a lot of stuff up. We haven't landed anywhere. But it's something that's uh, that's definitely high on the priority list um, to get back and, and make those make those hours on the track uh, count more for the teams. Larry Leach, from AP. Curious how the the changes this week. How do you think they'll affect um, safety? We've heard about how cars are expected to be looser in the turns and. I think that could lead to more crashes and some safety issues. Well, we th this is, uh, I think, part of our journey why I mentioned we've kind of been chipping at, at this away o o over time. Um, we also did come here several times, and last time, what, three weeks in Michigan to, uh, you know, make sure we were okay there. Uh, and before we even embarked on this uh, lower downforce uh, journey, we knew one of the things we had to really work on was getting a bit of power out of the car. If we hadn't got the power car, we take all that arrow off, we take a lot of drag off, we would have increased a lot of speed. So that was kind of the first installment into the whole thing because we were, you know, we wanted to make sure we had that right. So I, uh, from what we've seen with the drivers that uh, we've tried here in Michigan and, and uh, other tracks, I. I, I think they'll be they'll be fine. We asked them their opinion when we were here, uh, how, what they thought about it, and they they all thought it was was good to go. So, uh, and I'm sure with the time they have tomorrow, they'll kind of sneak up on it as they were today. So I think they're cautiously walking up and you know finding their new line and where they need to be. So, uh, yeah. One, one, one of the other one of the other things that we need to consider in in the question about safety is the fact that the the mid-corner speeds are much lower, so obviously lower mid-corner speeds, should there be an accident, are, are, are much better in the realm of safety. Yeah, so we're, we're down, when we were here and we tested, we were down 10 and a half miles an hour in a corner, so pretty significant speed reduction at the apex uh, in the corner. Mr. Utter? Jim Mutter, motorsport.com. Uh, Scott, as kind of a follow-up question to Bob's question earlier about lug nuts, I just wondered, after uh, five weeks, are you surprised at either the number of violations that have occurred that you guys have had to address, uh, and uh, have you, are you surprised at the criticism about the policy uh, that you've received, uh, considering how you got to this point in the first place? Well, we're going to receive criticism no matter what we do, right? <laughs> 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 uh, 
that's part, that's part of the game. Um, no, the the you know obviously taking into consideration the 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 way we landed, where we were actually forced to land by the teams, and then have the teams come back around on us is a little bit disappointing. But uh, the truth of the matter is, you look you you count up the number of lug nuts that are actually on the cars properly at the end of the race, and that shows you that they can do it. So that's what they need to do. They need to do it. All right, any final questions uh, for Gene or for Scott? Uh, we'll go with Stan Creekmore. Yeah, uh, Stan Creekmore with RPM tonight. For either one of you gentlemen, you've talked about what the drivers are saying. What have the car owners said to you concerning the changes that are taking effect today? Yeah, I think uh, one of the, and you're probably all aware, uh, been part of their journey also. We've, as NASCAR, we've always tried to collect input from all our stakeholders, whether they be the owners, the OEMs, the drivers. We haven't had a way of really collecting that input in a in a dis disciplined way. It's been fragmented, and so now with the journey we have, we have a drivers council, we have a council for the owners, we have a council for the OEMs. So we sit down and talk about all these things. They're all part, obviously we as NASCAR sanctioning body have to make the ultimate decision, but we today I think are having better input, input, clear input, input which is also understood by everybody because when everybody used to talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, they can never see everybody else's perspective. So I think we have a better way today of understanding all our stakeholders, their positions, and then when we do arrive at a decision, we, 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 we generally don't make a decision unless we have good support. So in this regard, we discussed this with the owners, and uh, not everybody agreed, but there was an uh, over-preponderance. Most of them did agree, and so, uh, so here we are. So I think it's just a part of our new way of working as it is. Anything to add to that, Scott, or are you good? No, uh, it's a perfect explanation. All right, that's uh, Kenny Bruce. to how much downforce you guys can take away and how much downforce the teams can get back before, say, a model change or something. If you stayed with these cars, would you eventually get to a point to where, okay, this is it? We have, Kenny, we have taken it lower. We've gone all the way down to 1,100. Uh, and we didn't feel that comfortable there because then the suspension didn't work as it should. And I mean, obviously, you could, if you spent a lot of time, you could probably perfect that. But I think we're kind of probably close to where we should be based on the knowledge we have now and the input from everybody. So uh, yeah, I think we're in a pretty good spot. But you know, you keep learning, you keep maturing, and maybe we'll, you know, we'll see something else here. So. Yeah, th there's 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 certainly more uh, to be had before it would before it would become a model change. And really, the trick to the tr the trick to I think getting all of this right is really working not only on the downforce aspect that we're working on, but continue. You know, our partners at Goodyear have done a fantastic job responding to the 2016 Aero package. And, you know, I think they've learned a lot through the development. So just continued work between the aerodynamics, NASCAR and the teams and our partners at Goodyear, I think is really going to, you know, we'll, we'll, through that continued work, which is always ongoing, um, is, is how we're going to really land on the, on the sweet spot. All right, gentlemen, thank you for coming in. If you have any questions or follow-up, uh, you can uh, Talk to a member of our IMC team, including some of the statistics that were cited today about passes for leads and the like. Thank you.